Hi, everyone. We welcome you once again to this channel and to our series on strength of materials under the mechanics of deformable patterns. Kindly subscribe, like, share, leave comments and suggestions at the comment section as well. This is lecture three, and we'll be looking at strain. Quickly, let's start with our lecture for today, which is strain. In our previous lecture, we stated that axial forces applied on a member can either be in tension or it can also be in compression, as you can see in the screen. And we said that if this loads at the ends passes through the centroid, then we are going to get uniform distribution of stresses. If it is the opposite, then we are not going to get equal stresses in every part of the area and the question. Now, this axial loads causes or may cause changes in the length of the member or the bar. So axial loads causes changes in length of the bar, in length of the bar. Now, this loss can either cause the bar to elongate. It can cause the bar to elongate. That is when the loads are in tension, as in this phase diagram, to cause the bar to increase its length. And it can also cause the bar to shorten or reduce in size. That is when the loads or the forces are in compression. Are in compression. This Changes in the length is what we refer to as deformation. The changes in length is what we refer to as deformation, and it is represented with the symbol delta. It's represented with the symbol delta. Let's assume that we have a bar here, and the original length of this bar from this point to that point is L. And we apply two forces which are in tension at the ends of the bar as seen. These loads or these forces at the end of the bar, because they are tending to stretch the bar, the bar is going to elongate and the new length of the bar is going to be the original length, which might be from this point to that point, which we refer to as L, plus the new or the increase in length, which we are referring to as delta at this side. Therefore, we are seeing that the loads which are applied at the end has caused an increase in the original length of the bar. This increase or this change in length, the change in length is what we call as elongation, elongation. And this elongation, which we are referring to as delta, the elongation over the original length, elongation 
over the original length of the material before the loose were applied is what we refer to as it's what we refer to as strain. It's what we refer to as strain. And therefore, we can say that strain is deformation a unit length, a unit length. And therefore, the symbol for strain is epsilon. So we can say that our epsilon is equal to the deformation, which is delta, or the change in length, which is delta, over the original or the initial length. Where this delta, as we have already stated, is our deformation or the change in length. And then our L is the original or the initial length. And this epsilon is the strain. From this formula, we can see that the deformation is in meters and the original length is also in meters. Therefore, if we have meter here and then we have meter there, this meter is going to take away that meter. And from there, we can say that strain has no dimension or is dimensionless. Dimensionless. It doesn't have any unit. It doesn't have any unit. Now, if the loads apply at intention, then we are going to increase the length. And for that matter, we refer to it as tensional, tensional strain. If the loads apply at intention, then we are going to produce a tensile or a tensional strain which is taken as positive. And if the loads are compressive, if the loads are compressive, then they are going to produce compressive strain. And that is also taken as negative, negative. Now, take note that this formula for strain is only useful when the deformation or the change in length or the extension is very small compared to the original length of the member. Because the force or the loads which are applied are normal to the cross section of the bar, this kind of strain is referred to as normal strain or axial strain because they are associated with normal or direct stresses. Therefore, they are referred to as normal strain or axial strain. And this brings us to the end of our lecture for today, if you have any question, comments, contribution, or anything you didn't understand, you can let us know at the comment section, and we will be glad to assist you in getting the concept which has been described here. Once again, we want to thank you very much for staying in touch with us. I'm going through this lecture series. Thank you for watching. Remember to kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell. See you in the next lecture. Until then, bye-bye for now.